Red Spinners and Sharks, so here we are. We're actually going to try out Southwest Airlines. Going to see if it's all it's hyped up to be. They've been canceling a lot of Vegas flights due to heat lately. So we're here at the Denver International Airport. We're having ourselves a nice cold beer. And we're going to see, is Southwest as good as we think it is? Let's go for and out. It's the Ace of Vegas, the Ace of Vegas. Before we get started, I just wanted to give a special shout out to our Patreon members that help keep us independent and growing. More on that later. Hey there Spinners and Sharks, Ace of Vegas here, and I hope you're doing well. So, as usual, we're off to Vegas. And because we don't live in Vegas, we need to find some way to get there. Enter the airlines. There are plenty of choices, both budget and non-budget, but since it's a short flight, I wanted to see if this particular budget airline was any good. So here we go on a Vegas trip with Southwest. Needless to say, we started with baggage. My favorite bit about Southwest is that they include two free bags in your ticket purchase. So even though we traditionally pack light, we'll pack one bag apiece to check and keep a personal item on the plane. Most other airlines charge you about $30 to $50 for the initial bag and occasionally even more for the second, so this saves us some time and money over other carriers. A direct consequence, however, is that the bag check lines are long, and they're slow because of the cumbersome self-tagging system. And unnecessary paper boarding passes. They're just backups. I'll tell you the For story. For safety. I'll tell you the story on air if you want later. Okay. And here we are, ready to check some bags. We got some bags to check. All right. As you know, when we run the gate, we wrap the Leaf Village. You don't know nothing about no Leaf Village. I know about the Leaf Village. What do you know about the Leaf Village? I know I saw some of it. You saw some of it? I know Naruto wants to become the fourth Hokage. The, 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 he wants to be the fifth Hokage. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's still on arc one for anyone that's still uh no actually you're in the tuning exams she's in the tuning exams for anyone watching all right it's and sharks so we got through security we got off the train just fine and while we're there wonder when was telling me an interesting story uh want to go ahead and tell me uh what happened last time you came back from the uk um, where you were speaking to one of the dogs there at customs. No, it wasn't the last time, it was quite a few years ago. So you're coming back from the UK, saying my sister-in-law, and then what happens? I was standing in line at customs with all my stuff, and one of the security pups who was almost done with her training. And this is a literal dog, by the way, right? A literal dog. A literal pup was walking through down the line and got to me and started hopping up and down. So was he hopping up and down for? Or is she hopping up and down for? Oh, it was a she. It's a female dog. Female dog. Um, I, ha I have a joke. Yeah, sure we, every, everyone has that joke. Everyone already had the joke. It is a, it was a literal girl dog. Yes. And I was hopping up and down because I had an orange, an unpeeled orange on me that was in the water bottle holder on the outside of my backpack. So, yeah, so they stopped you over in Orange. Yeah. So coming in from the UK back to the US, you're not allowed to bring the orange You're there. not allowed to bring produce. Um, Even things that are natively grown here. I guess it's not native. Is orange natively grown out here? Let us know in the comments section. I don't believe it is. I don't think so either. I do wonder, because I know we have Florida oranges. I, I guess uh, Manchester oranges aren't, aren't permitted. They just came in there like, Y'all ain't got no Florida oranges? Right into the trash can with that. Yes, I'll tell you they, what. They brought me over to the a corner where they took the orange, and I had either they or either they threw it into a into a bin, or they had me do it. I can't remember which. I think they did it. I think I handed it off to them, and then they tossed it. And they just the tossed bin. it right out. Yeah, it wasn't a garbage can. It was a bin. Mm. Although that's the same thing if you're a if you're a, a UK citizen watching. They say bin it. So throw it away. It's bin it. <laughs> Go in the bin. That's the trash. That's amazing. That's amazing. So yes, don't bring any produce 
overseas with you, even if it's something that you can get in that country. Just, just buy it there, I guess. All right, guys, we're getting ready to board right about now. We'll see you in the plane. On the plane, things weren't so bad. The legroom and the chair quality is pretty similar to Delta's. Don't get me wrong, the seats on Delta are more comfortable, but this isn't a bad alternative. In fact, it's far superior to what you get on Frontier by comparison. Additionally, the tray tables were actually usable. My hand eclipsed the other ones on Frontier and Spirit, so having a full-size tray is much better. Given us almost a two-hour delay, uh, we won't be pushing out the gate until uh, for about an hour and a half. So uh, we're working, making arrangements. So we're probably going to pull everybody off the airplane and uh, go with them. You can spend time up in the uh, up in the waiting area instead of having to sit on the airplane. But I'll get back to you in just a couple minutes. We'll get any, any updates. So I'll pass them on to you. But uh, appreciate hey, uh, your patience. Bear with us. Bad news for us too. But uh, we'll get it going here soon again. Luckily, after the delay got sorted out, the flight itself was pretty smooth. Takeoff and landing are rough, but on a plane that size heading over the Rocky Mountains, it just happens. The snack offerings were pretty light. We got some knockoff Chex Mix and a glass of Sprite on the flight. They're not doing a full alcohol service yet. It's roughly what you get on Spirit, only you don't have to pay $7 each way for it. So that's neat too, I guess. Looks like we're on final approach. A little bit of a, a little bit of a bumpy ride here. Again, that just seems to be kind of a byproduct of flying over the mountains. So not much to do there. I'll let you guys know when we get to the ground. Looking back on the flight, there were a few things that I liked. For being a no frills quick flight, this was more than comfortable enough. The seats are better than most budget airlines, and the tray tables are usable, so that's always good. Also, I prefer the open seating. No extra fees for seat assignments to navigate around. Granted, if you don't check bags, it's probably not worth the price difference, but if you pack a little heavier, then it's actually not too bad to have the two free bags to split things between, like your outfits and your spouse's shoes, for example. And while we were weather delayed, which, as I said in my Spirit video, can happen to any airline since weather isn't airline specific, I was at least able to get a bit of a voucher for future travel, which I promptly used to harass pennies for Vegas, but that's a story for another time. Point is, the communication was transparent and fast, so I appreciate that. Now for the bad news. Southwest is definitely more expensive than most budget airlines. If you buy bags with other low-cost airlines like Legion, Spirit, or Frontier, you'll probably save some money. But if you plan on traveling without a check bag or two, then the price difference likely isn't worth it. And the lack of in-flight entertainment was noticeable. On my hour and a half flight from Denver, it didn't matter too much, but I can see a flight from the East Coast becoming tedious very quickly. So what's the verdict? If you only pick one airline this winter to fly, pick Delta. But if you fly two airlines, consider making the other one Southwest if you've got a shorter flight or need to fly on a budget. They aren't anything special, but the expectations are met, so they've earned their three out of five. All right, spinners and sharks, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's review and found it informative, I'd appreciate a like, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Once again, before we go, I just wanted to shout out our Patreon members, including our newest Vegas virgin, Melba. Guys, it means the world to me that you choose to support me in this way and help me stay independent of YouTube and its algorithm. If you'd like a more direct hand in keeping Ace of Vegas growing, I have a link to the Patreon page in the description box down below. Have you ever flown southwest to Las Vegas? Was it a good experience? Or do you recommend a different budget airline for your Vegas visitation needs? Whatever your thoughts may be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Until next time, though, this is Ace of Vegas signing out, and I'm wishing you strong hands, and of course, happy spending, you guys. Viva, 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 Viva,